my fellow Limitless HBICs. How are you doing on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? I got shit all over me. How are you all? Well, first let me get the basic bitch shit over with. Um, if you need help figuring out what's going on between you and your manifestation, please feel free to email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com. Yes, I have Instagram, I have TikTok. Yeah. Um, I currently have a chunk of people that have paid for coaching that are needing to be scheduled. Um, but I'm moving through. I'm moving through the line. So if you email me, just have some patience. I'm getting to you. This is not your typical manifestation video. This is a video of, well, let me start like this. I made a promise to myself that when I made this channel that I was not going to share only good stuff. I'm not gonna share just good stuff. I've been fortunate enough where I haven't had a, a bunch of terrible things happen in my life since starting the channel. And nothing's happened in my 3D per se. I wanted to make this video to really enforce the importantness of when you're A, not in a favorable state, and B, and when I say not in a favorable state, meaning when you're having trouble getting out of a less favorable state, and allowing, well, the importance of allowing yourself to just heal and grow in the moments, in the moments, the moments where you're not feeling really amazing because that has been the last week for me. And I've had nothing happen necessarily in my 3D, you know, there's nothing happening. <laughs> there's no event that's taken place. I've just been in a yuck yuck state not so much victim more of i i just wanted to be out of how i was feeling but i'm not stupid i know what these moments are it's it's usually when you're about to woof, to the next state which is a good thing but in the moments that you're in it you know you're releasing you're letting go of other limiting beliefs and quite frankly, I feel we are always going to be on uh, an evolving journey until we croak, right? Until we are back to whatever you believe in. If you believe in God, back to God or source energy or to the universe when we shed our meat sack, right? But, you know, there were several times over the last week where I just, I just wanted so badly to get out of the state I was in but I knew the importance of allowing, just allowing. And I'm making this video for any of you going through that right now where you know maybe the 3D isn't having something specifically triggering you, but you know you're in just a funk, what feels like a funk. And maybe yucky thoughts are coming up in your mind. Hey, the ducks. Maybe you're having thoughts that don't match what you're manifesting, right? Maybe they're fearful thoughts and the importance of just allowing them instead of chasing them off and realizing that those thoughts are not you and you don't have to identify yourself with them. I also wanted to say a very special thank you to my friend, Brianne. Um, actually, she's the reason why I'm making the video and she doesn't even know it because... I, I'm fortunate. I have someone that when I'm struggling to get out of a state and I'm fortunate enough to where it, this doesn't happen very often for me. And I think that's only because I've been on this journey for so damn long that I, I know when I'm, I know what's happening when, when, when I feel like this, I know exactly what's happening, but this was a longer than usual one. And it was uncomfortable 
And there's a reason why they say get, you know, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Now, I also don't want anybody to think that this, this has to happen every time you shift your state or, you know, you start manifesting and you're ready to go deeper into manifesting and manifesting even more wonderful things with your specific person or, you know, money, whatever, whatever it is that you're manifesting. But does it happen sometimes? Yeah, it does. And is the importance of not wavering there? It is. But at the same time, it's not chasing all these thoughts off. It's allowing and listening and being the observer. Being the observer of your 3D. Being the observer of what's coming in your mind and reminding yourself that thoughts are a product of the state you're embodying. But you don't have to identify yourself with those thoughts. Meaning just because some fearful thoughts may enter your mind, that doesn't mean that they have to manifest. That doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. That doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean any of that. But I know that there are times when the thoughts feel so much more heavier, heavy, very heavy, and maybe difficult for you to even consider trying to think manifestation-y like when you're in those moments. And I know that that's how I felt a couple of times over the last week. Like, I don't, I, I don't even care about manifesting right now. I just don't want to feel like this anymore. But for any of you who are having moments and it's not your 3D necessarily, it's not, you're not having a devastating something or a devastating event in your 3D, it's just you're off. You're just off. You feel off. Lots of yucky thoughts are coming in. That you, some, of, some of the thoughts that were coming into my mind over the last week, I haven't had in my mind in a, I mean, over a year. Over a year. But they came up. They came up. And um, what I was trying to say is not everybody has a good manifestation buddy to lean on. Not everybody does. You know, I, I know just from coaching that sometimes those manifestation buddy groups aren't so great because there can be some selfish fuckers in there who aren't ready to listen to you when you need to have your talk, but they definitely want your attention uh, when they're having a tough time. And that, I, I just don't, that's why I always kind of like veer away from buddy groups because of that. But I have my girl, Brianne, and Brianne has been my buddy. And every time I try to thank her, she'll say, you've done it for me. So she won't, <laughs> she won't let me thank her, but I love her. And, you know, there there was an, a, at least two nights I can think of where she stayed on the phone with me for three hours. And sometimes we were doing nothing but just sitting there, not even talking. Not even talking. Just sitting there and talking about dumb shit. Like how I was in the middle, <laughs> the middle of watching autumnal videos on my TV. Because I finally bought a TV. Yeah. And some, the mess. We're, anyway. Don't think you're doing something wrong just because you're going through a moment of growth. You're not doing anything wrong. So anyway. How about some recommendations of when you're going through a growth moment? Um, I like to look at it as I'm evolving, I'm growing. And honestly, we all are. Like I said earlier in the video that I, I do think that we are always going to be growing, evolving. Doesn't mean your 3D has to be a hot mess express, that we're gonna have our growing moments. And when we do, the importance of when the fearful thoughts come up, realize they're not coming up because they're predicting your future. They're not coming up and then, oh my God, you sat on them too much and now they have to manifest. Or you sat on them too long and you spiraled and you had some, you had a cry, you got emotional, and now they got to manifest. That's, that's, that's not the, the case. The importance is, is being easy on yourself in those moments. I sometimes have a shitty habit of getting frustrated with myself for, for feeling that way because I feel... If I'm going to put myself out there, 
on YouTube and, you know, other platforms that I have a higher expectation on myself to get out of those moments pretty damn easily, like snap, crackle, pop, like I talk in my videos. And I think that in itself is an issue that it's okay to not be fucking perfect, which is why I say that in pretty much all my videos. I don't have to be perfect either. And I'm going to share every aspect of my journey on here, hence this video. But so the number one thing is be easy on yourself. There are no expectations. You you don't have to put, you know, a, a, a rule on how you should think and feel every single day. Don't get me wrong. I know with manifesting, the idea is we are trying to embody the state of the person that has the desires you're manifesting, whether you're using affirmations, scripting, visuals, blah, 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 to get into that state. Or if you're like me and you like to just think about how I would think and feel if I was living that life and then embody that and, and hold that. But not that you have to be there 24 seven. That's not what I'm saying. But you know, I know that's what we're doing to manifest, but you know your body, you know your thoughts. And like I'm going to say over the last week, I have felt heaviness all over me. Heaviness, fearful thoughts, worrying. And if you don't have someone, my suggestion is watch this video. Start with being easy on yourself. Remind yourself that fearful thoughts are not you. You don't have to identify with those thoughts. Be easy on yourself. Allow yourself that moment of healing, growing, evolving, even if it feels incredibly uncomfortable like the last week of mine has. Okay. Number two, this is something, all the tips that I'm sharing today, just so you know, is exactly what I've done over the last week. I just want to say that to you, okay? And I'm already starting to feel a hell of a lot better. But my number two is shut out the world. <laughs> shut out the world. I literally um, created, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't have Android. I have an Apple iPhone. An iPhone, you can create your own way of like of a do not disturb. I think it's called Focus. I don't even know what it's called. I just push it and boom. I created one where I had three emergency contacts excuse me, four emergency people that can get through my phone. Uh, my child, my boyfriend, my father, and Brianne. Uh, oh, father slash mother too, right? They're not married, but I just think of them as one. I know that sounds weird. Um, that's it. That's the, I, mean, I love my siblings, but no, not this last week. I can't have the intrusions. And I allowed no one else in no one else in and that's no no uh, you know unlove to anybody that normally has you know can interact with me on my phone I don't mean that in a bad way but I had to shut the world out I had to shut the world out and I needed it now I, although from on my end I still continued coaching so any of you that still have to go to work I still worked I still did I still kept my coaching schedule um, I did not go live, for example, last night. I didn't go live last night. I canceled or to be rescheduled my channel membership live stream on Tuesday. I knew I'm very strict with myself that if I'm in a low energy and it's something I have to sustain with multiple people at me, I'm not going to come. Me having a one-on-one, -on -one, it's easy for me to shut things off and just focus on one person. But live streams are a different matter. And even though on the Wednesday lives, it's just me talking to my phone, mm -mm, I'm still feeling all of you that are watching. So I'm like, nope, because I don't want my low energy to come off on you. See what I'm saying? But coaching is a little different for me because now it's more of a habit. I am able to kind of shut things off. Um... So yeah, take, turn the world off. Set your phone so like only certain emergency people can get through to you. Um, but shut it off and stay off social media because I'll tell you, I did. I didn't go to TikTok. I didn't go to Instagram. Um, YouTube, I, di I did upload a video or two. Um, and I did respond to comments because, and this is no judgment to Instagram or TikTok. For me, YouTube is my home. And YouTube feels like my safe place. It feels... I feel safe at YouTube. Not that I don't feel unsafe anywhere else. Like, I don't mean it in a bad way. But YouTube is just, it's like coming home to me. So, responding to comments on YouTube, it feels like talking to friends. 
I can't, I, I can't explain why it feels that way to me. It just does. So I shut the world out. I did. Um, number three, I allow myself the emotions. Allow yourself the emotions. If you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like screaming, scream. If you feel like rampaging, rampage. If you feel like doing nothing manifestation wise and you just want to chill, do it. Do it. Take the break. Allow the emotions. It's okay. Number four, try to remember that these thoughts that I've mentioned already several times in the video that we don't have to identify ourselves as. We don't, we don't have to fear them. But really, when I talk about sitting with your feelings, sitting with the thoughts that come up instead of instantly chasing them off. And like I said, you don't have to do this for every single manifestation. You don't. And not every single fearful thought. But if it's something that has been plaguing you for a long time and is really weighing down on you, this is the time we want to sit and observe them. Sit and observe them. Because listen, you know, I've talked about sitting with your feelings often on my channel. And it's not because I want you to sit there and torture yourself with these terrible thoughts. It's more of, no. Let's really listen. Sit and listen. And be the observer of the thoughts. You know, when I say... Don't identify yourself as those thoughts anymore. I mean, it's about waking yourself up to realize you've been carrying this storyline with yourself. And it's why they keep coming up. It's why those scary thoughts exist. Because probably for a long time, you've been telling the story that that's you. That that's you. You're the, for me, you're the girl who gets abandoned. That's your storyline. That's been your life, or at least it was mine. It was mine. And it's a story that I have had to shed and work on. So it's not surprising to me that it came up. I've, I've had that belief for a, a very long time. Excuse me. No. It's when those thoughts are coming up. And they're heavy and and they feel very real and scary that it is just a story that you have told yourself over and over and over again throughout your entire existence and if you've had multiple experiences your old experiences are probably coming up in your mind and we've always used them to validate the truth of that storyline that you've been carrying your whole life. And for me, it was abandonment. So in these moments, it's really, I know I'm being so damn wordy. <laughs> I'm struggling to get it out today. The, this is an opportunity for you to wake up again and realize the 3D is but a, 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 a dream an illusion that you're creating, you are, you are, not the ego you, the, the, in, the eternal you. If you believe in God, the God part of you or the higher power, higher source, higher self, source energy, you're creating it and you've been carrying a storyline your ego has. The concept, no, the, the ego has been carrying a storyline that just doesn't have to be your story anymore. And this is your opportunity to let it go, to let it go, to finally let it go. See the 3D as the dream it is, because it is. You don't have to be the girl or guy who gets abandoned anymore. What's the new story? What's your new story? Who are the who is the new you? Please, please remind yourself. You don't have to identify with those scary, fearful thoughts that are coming up in your mind. You don't. They're not you. They're the old version of you. 
They are coming up to be released. And it's nothing more than that. Trust in that. Trust in that. They are coming up to be released. There's no human on this planet who is perfect or expected to be perfect. There is no human in the manifestation world that is perfect or above having a bad day or above having limiting beliefs come up. And I am definitely one of the people that still will have random moments like this past week has been where thoughts are coming up, limiting beliefs are coming up. And like I, I mentioned earlier, I'm very quick to criticize myself. And that's where my friend Brianne came in and shut that shit down for me. So I'd like to shut it down for you. Don't criticize yourself. You're not expected to be perfect. And quite frankly, if you believe in manifestation, you believe in the law of assumption, you believe what I believe, that we are the only cause of what we experience, but not from a place of blaming ourselves. Not from a place of blaming ourselves. If you still believe in that, then you know you have that safety net of knowing these shitty thoughts and feelings that are coming up from within, from my ego. I don't have to identify myself as those anymore. I'm letting those go. And you have the power and authority of your own mind to declare that and mean it. I am letting these go. I am letting these go. I'm evolving. I'm leveling up. And I'm going to feel better. I know I am. I'm going to feel better. And you will. You will. You'll come out of it. I know sometimes being in those places, it's, it's not fun. It's not fun. But most importantly, I want you to know you're, you're not a manifestation failure because you're having a shitty day or a shitty couple of days or a shitty week. You're not a failure. Just don't give up. And by don't give up, taking a break is okay. It's okay. But don't entertain the thought of that manifesting isn't working for you. Or now you're going to have to start over because you took a break. Or you've allowed yourself to cry. You've allowed yourself to listen to the fears that were coming up. And when I say listen to the fears, allow them in, I mean don't chase them off. They're coming up to be released. They're coming up to be released. I didn't chase those thoughts off. I didn't chase the thoughts off. I let them in. I sat with them. I listened. I listened. For me this week, what was dominant, dominantly coming up was things surrounding abandonment because abandonment for me started in childhood, not from my parents. I didn't have a terrible childhood, but it started in my childhood and has followed me, obviously, all until I discovered manifestation. And I've wor been working on that within me since I realized, holy shit, that explains the the experiences I have had in relationships, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, my specific person, <laughs> I love him, has done nothing to make me feel or worry or fear abandonment. I have allowed those to come up this week so I can let them go, period, and get back to embodying the state of the woman who knows that it's safe and secure for her to trust that she's never going to be abandoned again. I'm never going to be abandoned again. I'm never going to experience that again. I don't have to fear being abandoned anymore. And neither does anybody else if abandonment is your deal or not feeling good enough or not feeling chosen or whatever it is that you have, what feels like hanging over your head. It doesn't have to control you anymore. And just because you're feeling down weak, heavy. It's okay. It's a moment of time. It's going to pass. Don't call yourself a failure. Don't think something more is wrong. Don't think your manifestation isn't going to come now. Or if you are someone who already has the manifestation, like me, it doesn't mean you're about to lose it because you're having a moment, a moment of growth. And I really like to believe that it is within these moments that we are growing the most. So don't beat yourself up for having it. I certainly, I'm not doing that to myself. There were a few moments where I started to and I had to shut that shit down. And Brienne, my friend who I am very grateful for, 
was also there to slap me if necessary. So I'll be ready to slap you if you need me to, okay? And on that note, I hope this video is helpful to anybody who is in a growth moment, we'll call it growth, because it is, we're evolving. And um, my intentions are to go live tomorrow to make up my Missing Wednesday Live. I'm gonna do it tomorrow, which is Friday. That's my intention, yeah? Um, and I will also be letting my channel members know when the rescheduled date is. What? And on that note, I'll see you all. Bye.